everyone, welcome to my homeschool curriculum picks video. I'm excited to explain to you how we're doing homeschool this year. Now, in North America, we generally start in August, September for our homeschooling um, or for school in general, but we're kind of doing it a little bit different. I am following the Queensland term schedule in Australia because that is where we are wanting to move to and eventually our kids will kind of transition to that term schedule. So, and I really like their, their schedule. It is basically like almost nine weeks on, two weeks off-ish and I find that really works well for our family. So right now we're in term three for the year and um, my eldest who is six in November is almost done her grade one stuff. Um, I say almost technically um, she would be starting grade one here in Canada. Um, so I would say she's about halfway through grade one curriculum. And I'm gonna show you everything that we're using. Behind me is our homeschool cabinets. We have one for crafting and one for all of our curriculum picks and books and all of that. And I'm gonna be showing you an in-depth view of all of our cabinets in another video. So that is my dinner and I'm gonna get into showcasing the curriculum picks um, in a view that kind of looks down at the table so I can show you what that looks like. And um, I hope you all enjoy. We are um, three quarters of the way through our school year. We start our school years in January instead of like August, September. Um, but I thought I'd share kind of what we're into right now and what we're doing the next couple of months. So we are just finishing Botany from Gather Around Homeschool. We are still using Gather Around Homeschool since we first started homeschooling. I love, love, love this unit. We are almost done. And alongside Botany, we are doing Ready to Read number three, Ice and Snow. So the Ready to Read program is the equivalent of a grade one program, kindergarten grade one. By the time they're done, they'll be around a grade one level. Um, so we're just working our way through the Ready to Read. It has language arts, math, science, social science, language arts, all of the categories all in one curriculum. And you go through each level, Ready to Read 3, 4, which is Savannah, that's the next one. And we're loving that. The student notebook I have here is for letters and numbers one, which is for my youngest. Whenever he wants to be at the table with us, he can join us by just coloring and you know, seeing shapes and symbols and talking about it. I have no expectations for schooling for him yet. So he basically gets to do whatever he wants. So we introduced him to this notebook here. I do have more modern kid press um, books on the side for extra practice on spelling and writing. Um, and I've noticed her writing greatly improving as she's practicing. So I love these books. These I got on Amazon. And um, I will show you our math curriculum next. Beautiful Simply Math, uh, number one. And that is what it looks like. It's really, really pretty. And I think she's about halfway through in terms of level for this one, but we'll see because there's some stuff in here that may be a little bit more difficult, but I think she's, she's like about halfway through grade one at the moment. Um, I did get the manipulative box, which she had that opens. I really liked the idea of the clock on the front and then we have some dice and then there are game pieces in here some clocks some money and these shapes for um rolling pictures and things so because they're just playing with the toe right over there um, so that's what we're going to be using for math this year because Gather Around Homeschool ends the math at like, grade one level. So I just want to make sure there's no gaps and start this a little earlier. I also printed off from the Good and the Beautiful, the level one reader, um, just to have some extra reading. Then I also bought their beginner books 
series i skipped box a because i think emma is a little more advanced so um than box a and she can read box b pretty well so we will be moving on from b and moving on to c very shortly and then of course box d is their more advanced um beginner books so we're incorporating that this year i want to share two more resources we're using in our homeschooling we've been using these for the last two years plus and we love them i'll also link them down below the exploring nature with children is a year-long curriculum that you can pull out whenever you want to go outside with your kids but you don't really know like what you're looking for what to talk about what kind of resources are available to explore what's outside, poems, all of that. So for example, let's go to March, week four in March. So here we have garden snails. So this curriculum is based in the Northern Hemisphere and specifically targets more um, like north of the equator, maybe even like Northern US versus like southern US, um, but garden snails. You take a look at all of the information about garden snails here that you can talk about with your kids, um, the activity for your nature walk, and some ideas for um, books that you can check out at your library or purchase. And there's a poem or two here as well and even comes with art suggestions. So you can look those up online, extension activities, and different things you can talk about in your uh, nature journal too. So the Exploring Nature with Children is an awesome curriculum and I highly, highly recommend it to everybody. So take a look, um, Lynn created a fantastic resource and I, I highly, highly recommend it. The other resource I wanted to talk about is the Rooted Childhood Connection kind of curriculum, I call it. It's not really curriculum, it's more of a resource that helps you connect with your kids. Um, there's an amazing uh, version called the Children's Hour if you want to make that a family um, routine to have like an hour dedicated to your kids. And basically there is um, connection, ideas, recipes, stories, activities, crafts um, that are related to the season and the month. So if we go to right now, we are in, let me just find August here and show you. Um, <laughs> this is July and okay, August. So you have this beautiful cover here and um, I downloaded it from the PDF, but it is available from print too from Megan. And basically it talks about end of summer celebrations, ideas to celebrate. Um, both of these are uh, secular. I mean, the Rooted Childhood does have reference to Christian holidays, um, but it's definitely not um, like faith filled. Uh, resource. So here is a story that you can learn and then either perform for your kids or read directly out of the book. Then there are some poems that go with the month of August, more poems, songs and games, and she has um, videos and audio that you can listen to to memorize them and sing with your kids. There are picture book recommendations. So if you're looking to expand your library for the month of August, you can go to your library or your public library, sorry, or you can purchase these. And then there are handicraft projects. So it talks about um, all of the things that you will need for the month of August if you wanna create them, it's all on one handy sheet. And then um, you have like recipe cards for each craft. And they are all very easy um, to do um, with a little bit of help. So I love that. And at the end, there's generally recipes for the month. So these recipes you can do with your kids as well. They're um, really nutritious and adaptable for um, 
like vegan, gluten-free. Um, these are really healthy, amazing, and very tasty recipes. I've tried quite a few of them and um, yeah, they're delicious. So you can adapt them to your, your family's needs. So like this one, if you don't have coconut cream or you don't um, like it or whatnot, you can just you know, it says optional there. So I love, love, love her recipes. And um, Megan is an inspirational mom and I love her resources. Oh, another thing to mention at the beginning of her resources, she talks about like how to read poems, how to sing songs, how to story tell with your kids. So if you're one of those moms that thinks, oh gosh, I really wish I knew how to like do that, those things. Well, she teaches you how to do it and what handicraft skills and milestones they should be hitting by their age. So this is really, really helpful to know, like, am I being realistic with my expectations? Is this too hard for, say, a two-year-old, et cetera? Or maybe you are underestimating how much your kid can actually do on their own. So I love, love, love this, um, this kind of chart here. So that is the Rooted Childhood and that is the exploring nature with children our next two units after botany is north america and south america and the way the unit studies work you have a teacher's guide from get around homeschool sorry and basically you read the lesson you um, research it you dive deep with different books or youtube videos and you follow the activity breaks or optional extension activities and then depending on how old your kids are their individual student notebooks would have different um, expectations of work so for um for all the different levels here they have kind of a snapshot of what they're doing in their notebook for the teachers so all the way up until high school so we got quite a few books that i'll show you um shortly for north america and I will be buying for South America early next year. So really excited about those. Of like Barnes and Noble in the US. I got a few books that were recommended in the Gather Round Homeschool North America unit. And that is the unit we're doing next in December, January. So uh, that is this book, which is so nice. Really like that one. Introducing North America, My Canada, which is an illustrated atlas just about Canada, which there's not a lot of resources, to be honest, that I have found. Um, so I'm excited about this one. Then Animals, Birds, and Fish of North America. This book is massive. It was expensive, but it is beautiful. And it is... Um, obviously more advanced than my children's ages. So it's something that I can read and yeah, love that one. That was also recommended in the Gather Round Homeschool. And, oh, wow. And the Smithsonian Children's Illustrated Atlas. This one is also really cool. We have beautiful illustrations, photos, very, very cool. I was lacking in the geography books. I don't know how that's possible because I'm obsessed with geography, but that's what happened. <laughs> so I bought a few extra from Osborne. So if you are in Canada, you can purchase Osborne directly through me. I'll leave the link down below. Um, but we really like the phonics readers. My kids, especially my youngest, really, really likes them. They have a QR code on the back where you can scan and listen to the book being read in both uh, Canadian English and British English. If you're in the US, there is an, um, an American version as well. So these phonics readers are really easy to read for young readers and they rhyme and they're really, really cute. So I got Ted in a bed, Toad makes a road. We have like six others. The Osborne flat book, Great Inside, or Inside Great Cities. Um, I thought this would be cool to tie in with our North American unit along with some of the other um, 
geography based units we have. So when we studied Australia, and then there is London, New York City, we have all like really great cities in here. So I thought that was cool. And the last book, because we're obsessed with all things nature, 1000 Things in Nature, we have the 1000 Things to Eat and Things That Go. And they really like looking at them. So I got this one. It includes like rocks and um, let me see here rocks and fossils and trees and bugs and food and like a lot of different different um categories in this book so i thought that was really cute from the waldorf crafting perspective i got this book called crafts throughout the year or through the year and it was recommended by uh, sarah who's the owner of i believe bella luna toys um i'm trying to get into more waldorf style handicraft crafting this year with Emma now that she's a little bit older so I did get some kite paper which I have here well, I got two packages of kite paper to try um, the stars and then I got some yarn some really pretty um not wool yarn <laughs> acrylic yarn that has like glitter and cute colors on it to get her interested in yarn crafts and I got um a weaving frame, I got a couple of tongs, and then I got this uh, dry felting starter kit. So I'm excited to dive into that with her this year too. If you have any questions, let me know down below, but I will link everything um, that we're using in the description box.